probably less than 10 minutes. I don't know. Uh, we got shit to talk. Hi, everyone. Apparently, we have shit to talk. Welcome to the Unnamed Anime Podcast. I'm Brogan. I'm Mitch. And I'm shit talking Jesse. <laughs> ooh, ooh, he's prepared. He's about it. Especially because I just kind of dropped this in his lap. He yesed and that, and I'm so excited. Um, so I didn't tell Mitch this as we we're kind of sit- sitting here, just kind of goofing off, uh, waiting for the things to start. Uh, and Jesse 100% doesn't know this because I like to keep secrets. Um, I want to start off today by talking about our flavors of the seasons. Uh. Oh, let's talk about them first. Yeah, I want to talk about them first. I we need to talk about ReZero and uh, not so much Jujutsu Kaisen. We can kind of get into, but I think uh, I personally, after watching last night's episode of ReZero, uh, which was called uh, "By Guts and uh, Glory," um, no, love, love, love me to my blood and guts. Oh, love me to my blood and guts. Yes, uh, I think. I watched that last night, and I got... I had to talk about it, but no one was there to, so I had to bottle up, and now some of that energy is gone, but I think we... I... I need your guys' thoughts. Um, Jesse, Mitch, tell me what you thought. Jesse, I'll let you go first, sir. That was probably my favorite singular episode of ReZero. Um, Can you kind of explain a little more... Uh, I mean, we'll probably get a lot more in-depth tonight, uh, but... Can you give, uh, like, some little quick... Uh, Man, Brogan said, show your work. Touch notes <laughs> of uh, what made it your singular favorite. Because that is a strong opinion. I know you do not lie. It had everything. It had beautiful animation. It had beautiful dialogue. It had some of the backstory on characters who, you know, were touched upon, but kind of went a little more in depth, like with the gutting chick and like that, that one school bitch who controlled the mad beast is actually her little sister or, you know, whether, whether that's like their own, like Luffy ace kind of sisterhood, which I think it is. Cause she, her upbringing was, you know, explained. And I'm like, well, you probably didn't have a sister, if this was happening. Um, um Sorry, I need to cut you off for a second, Jesse. Uh, oh, you want me to explain, then cut me off. Okay, I got you. <laughs> no, sorry. I, I just realized uh, I've been wanting to try to like do this more often, but we need to like, just immediately tell people, hey, we're a spoiler cast. We're going to spoil everything. We're talking about what has just happened. <laughs> get, caught, cu- get caught up with your anime, because fuck you. I thought you were going to say get cucked, and I was like, okay. Also, get <laughs> cucked. We oh, can't no. say it on Twitch, but we just did. Is that one of the words that's bad now? Yeah. Okay. I know simp was, but I didn't know if well, cuck was. calling someone a cuck is. Uh, uh, wow, we are saying... Come at us, Twitch. Um, come on me, Twitch. <laughs> but anyway, sorry, Jesse, continue. Uh, the little sisters and their... The, the two sisters and their physical or non-physical sisterhood. <clears throat> yeah, like kind of giving like a little backstory of both, like, of like the crazy bitch and like how she became crazy. Um, I love, you know... How Garf, like, you know, is protecting his sister so much, and, like, how, like, Garf is really just that nigga. Um, (laughs) I love the dialogue between the gutting bitch and Garf. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, uh, You know, I I love their fight scene. Um, Even going back to the fucking sanctuary, you know, I loved how, you know, um, (laughs) uh, Wrath was like, yeah, you kind of pissed a kid off. Why? Because you passed. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's like, you know, so I, I love that shit. And I love how Wrath is like, you know, was like, don't turn around. But then like, was like completely on her side and so happy for her. Um, God, just so, so beautiful. So beautiful. Just a lot. Everything was just, I don't know. That was just a perfect episode of my mind. It gave me everything I wanted. And I don't know, like definitely I, I watched it and I was like, this was probably the most memorable episode I've seen. Like, just the that amount of stuff that happens, how important the stuff was, and how beautifully it was portrayed. Um, that is an A-plus episode. I would recommend anyone, you know, if you want to see what a great episode of anime is, there you go. Because a lot of times, and Jujutsu Kaisen also does this very well, but when you have multiple different, like, settings going on, it's hard to transition in the middle of an episode or, you know, after a few minutes smoothly but it was just like I was on the edge of my seat just the entire time. It was it was perfect to me. 
All right. Um, Mitch, uh, your feelings on it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think this is definitely one of, if not the best episode of the series yet. Um, another thing, like Jesse was saying, but another thing that they do well, besides just the pacing and the transitions, is they have this great way of breaking up serious moments, action moments, with a little bit of like lighthearted comedy. Like the part where Garf's like, I know my boss is out there right now kicking ass, and then it cuts to Super screaming for his mommy. <laughs> or the part where, like, it's it's super beautiful where uh, Ram just grabbed the tome through in the fire, and she's like, finally, I won, and then she gets fucking yeeted. I was laughing so hard. She legit ragged all. She said, oh. I do not think I fucking laughed at that part, though. Like, it was just like, like I won, and she's crying. She's like, it's a beautiful moment, and then just, yeah, <laughs> just, just yeah, that's Sunk her goddamn battleship. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I love ReZero that they can make a wonderful, action-filled, serious episode, but still make you giggle in that same episode. Um, I think that kind of also goes to kind of a point Jesse made that uh, I think is why ReZero and Jujutsu Kaisen are, are flavors of the season. Uh, because Jujutsu Kaisen does that really well, too. Yeah. Like, does that really good action and we can cut to this joke, but it won't take away from what is happening. Uh, Jesse, I really also really liked what you said about uh, the kind of that transition between scenes that we were getting uh, between the different plot points. I want to start talking about that first. Is this our first time in ReZero where we, not, where we have an A, B, and C plot? going on at the same time um maybe the first time where it's that obvious of an a b and c where it's not kind of a subplot or like a secretive thing that's going on in the background that it's like a b c just right there in your face happening maybe so um i think in the earlier seasons there might have been something different or like not really a plot but more of like uh seeds being planted because like let's say for example when subaru was like staying in the mansion at first you know, like, you had, like, Subaru doing his shit, you had, um, Amelia doing her shit, then you had, um, fucking, wow, I'm blanking on, clown guy. Roswell? Fuck. Yeah. Um, Roswell doing his shit, like, all, like, Amelia in her own little world, Roswell planning shit, and Subaru just like, how the fuck do I not die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, so, I mean, but this was, like, the most, um, I guess, influential time where just, like, everything, may, like, this you need to be paying the fuck attention. Like, it's not just, like, Amelia, like, writing in her diary or sitting in her room or talking to, uh, you know, her spirits. It's, it's like, no, like, this is, like, saying, like, we're about to murder a main character right now. We're going to murder someone from who's been here since episode one. If you, <laughs> like, this is a possible thing. Um, I, I agree with you, but I, see, here's what I took away from it. I agree with the there is always been these like snippets of like characters doing stuff, but hasn't it always just been, we've been purely following Subaru. He's been in almost every single scene. We never really go any scene that is not Subaru or plot that is not Subaru oriented. It's always just kind of there for a second, small conversation gone. This seemed like more game of Thrones. Uh, we have all these plots happening at the same time. Yeah, I guess you're right. This is kind of the first time that we've delved into having multiple points of views for entire episodes, where it's not just the Subaru-centric storyline of what's going on with the witch and why can he come back to life, where this has multiple impactful things happening to different characters, and they're all growing in their own right, and we get to see that growth from their point of view versus just seeing it from Subaru's perspective. Well, like, like for a singular episode, I would agree with that, but, like, a lot of times it was, think back to, like, the earlier times where just Subaru, like, kept dying by, like, specific circumstances. Basically, when he gets to the very end where he finally pulls that last thread and realizes what the problem is, then it shows, okay, what caused that to happen? Like, for example, like, in this, in this, like, most recent thing where 
you know, he just kept dying, kept dying, you know, get eaten by bunnies, do all this, X, like, X, Y, and Z. And then he realized, oh, Rosewall is the problem. And then it showed Rosewall, you know, telling those two bitches to go do this while I fuck with this over here. Maybe he's not going to do that. So, like, I don't know. I feel like the show definitely does, like, you know, Subaru storyline, Subaru storyline, encounters a problem, tries to solve problem. When he solves the problem, then it shows how that problem became a thing. Yeah, but is this not the first time that we've experienced someone else's timeline outside of a sort of a flashback or a recap situation where it's like we have Emilia's point of view live as it's happening? I'm trying to think if that had happened at any time in the earlier seasons. I personally don't think so. I'm also... uh, I could be wrong, but I thought... uh, the only time we actually saw uh, Roswell talking about uh, sending the two assassins was when Subaru confronted him. We ne- uh, Jesse, your statement made it seem like uh, it was uh, we see Ros- yeah, yeah, we see Roswell talking to them as opposed to Subaru going, "Hey, dude, you're doing fucky shit." And he's like, "Yes, I sent some assassins and also killer bunnies that ate your insides." Is that your Roswell? Well, voice? he didn't say that. That's mm, the bunnies are just their own shit. <laughs> I'm in love with a dead bitch. Help. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Uh, what do we think about Miss uh, Ram? Did they just kill off the second now dead sister? One's in a coma. <laughs> okay, a <Who>? coma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wiped from existence and all memory, <laughs> including her own. Like her memory. She's still breathing. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's not necrophilia. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> the body is still warm, Subaru. <laughs> Oof. Oh, no. One I'd thing that I did Tell think Stuart. fucking baller about this episode <sighs> was it was just kind of a flash. It was just a singular, not necessarily a singular frame, but a singular, like, second or two, um, was Ram regenerated her horn when she went to attack and grab the tome. Oh, I, I thought that. that was so fucking cool that all of a sudden you are like, oh, shit, she's back at full power. Like, what happened? If I said I was going to eat my hat, I would be eating it right now. Because I did not think we'd actually see the fight between her, Puck, and Roswell. Like, we're not seeing the full fight, but we are seeing... Bits of it. The last bit of it. Yeah, the, the climax, if you will. Oh, and there's a climax. Uh, and we don't know if she... <sighs> she straight ragdolled. I, I don't think that scene was supposed to be funny, but I laughed so hard because it zoomed out and just showed a shadowy silhouette of her. And like her arm was like behind her neck and like her, her leg was like bent over and she was like, yeet. Like uh, that made me laugh so hard. I don't know what it is about just like that ragdoll animation, but it killed me. Just straight killed me. You were laughing at the end of the show another. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I, we'll we'll uh, talk about that yeah. later, probably tonight, or just on our own. Uh, Jesse, you didn't give an actual answer of if you think Ram is dead or not. Do you? <sighs> you know, I don't want to say it doesn't matter. But... Depending on how, you know, how everything's going on currently right now and whether or not she is actually dead, we don't know what the safe point is. <laughs> That's a good point. That could have changed. Um, yeah, so we don't know. Like, possibly, you know, let's say, for example, you know, right before she got ragdoll, maybe the, at the house, all that just already taken care of. You know, like, the battle's already done. I mean, it basically was, you know, he threw the fucking, what, the big-ass hippo on top of that bitch, and she died. <laughs> Rock she quote-unquote died or couldn't <laughs> regenerate. I don't know, they kept it ambiguous, but I'm pretty sure she's dead. Uh, we could talk about that for a second. She's 100% dead. It, it, it kind of seemed to allude to it, because, like, yeah. her, neck, her neck wasn't healing after that last bite from Garf. No, Garf is a vampire now. 
Oh, you That's what happened. No, I, that is 100% what happened. Oh. They went down on each other, just biting at each other's neck. The, like, love for blood and guts. Like, she was enamored with him, which is gross because he's 14. And she's... That's fine, isn't it, right, Mitch? the fuck she is. Adult, big-tittied woman. <laughs> uh, but they they were eating... And, like, he stole her vampirism, which is what she probably did to that dude who tried to rape her. Huh. Which is why that scene comes up, and she's remembering, this is when I became a vampire. This is when I became love for blood and guts. And Garf has now taken it. He now cannot die by normal means. If Garf wasn't already OP, now he's OP and immortal. I mean, that was a fucking crazy twist. Like, you're a vampire. Like, a vampire vamp- tiger. <laughs> Vampires are here in the show now? Well, and it even it, it said that Echidna was a vampire. I thought it just said one of the witches. Well, it said, didn't it say the old witch that used to live here? I'm pretty positive it said the old witch that used to live here. Did it, Jesse? Um, I'm not positive. I am 99% sure that's what Garf said when he was talking to her. Okay, I I made a mistake. I I said I didn't do the thing I was going to do, which was I wanted to actually re-watch the episode before coming today. Uh, because I, I needed it back on that high of what happened, because it's everything's just so intense like that whole entire fight between her and Garf and her going like all R R on him <laughs> yeah. and he's he is bloodied and bruised and she's like uh, don't you think it's unfair I don't have to feel shit and he's like nah fuck you it's like it's still unfair in my advantage fuck you bitch <laughs> uh, but yeah I think she's 100% dead I hope so uh, not, not a fan of that character I think the kind of Yandare blood-loving... I, I think that's overplayed. I, I didn't necessarily enjoy her character that much. Yeah, but she was so hot. I mean... I, any gothic-dressed, big titty anime chick is about the same level. Je- Jesse, I think, I think you're with me because you mentioned the same thing. Bad bitches are weirdly hot. And this is why people are in toxic relationships. Uh, <laughs> I like a nice girl. He wants a church girl who goes to church. And read your Bible. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. But yeah, no. Uh, you know what I've noticed? We've been talking about ReZero for about 14-ish minutes now. We've not once mentioned Amelia's trial because it's just kind of boring. It's just kind of there. It's just, okay. <laughs> like once she got over her trauma, she just kind of breezed through the rest of the trials like they weren't even a thing. It's just like, eh. well, I think we talked about last week. She made fucking a kid to cry from breezing through the the pre- trial of the present. Yeah, like she was like, you fucking wholesome ass bitch. <laughs> and then like literally. <laughs> Whenever she was done with her, like the the last trial, she she went to go see the, you know, just like she was at the like, tea party shit. She was like, "Damn, like she showed me some pretty fucked up shit." But since it's in the future, it's not guaranteed to happen. And then like she got reassurance from Wrath, like, "Yeah, you pissed a kid off. She probably only showed you all the bad possibilities. That means there's good ones out there too." I mean, Ralph also said, "A kid is low key a massive cunt." She would only ever show you the bad possibilities. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, kid is yeah. mean. Yeah, I don't know. To me, Am- I I hope Amelia has some sort of character growth in this upcoming arc. Because to me, she's just become this very stale, almost doll-like character. <gasps> I I think that's what's happening. Because she went from just being sad and angry at Subaru every so often whenever he'd go against her but now she's like i am me and i'm doing what i want to do and i don't care how other people feel but she's not doing so in like a 
oh, I'm free, I'm liberated, I'm going to go live my... She's just kind of chilling. She just... She she literally seems just like a, a porcelain doll that's just sitting there smiling through it all. And it's just... she In my opinion, she's become a very stale character. We did also just find out that she was cursed by Roswell. True. That that was a twist I did, did not see, and I think was lost a little bit in translation... And in probably from the uh, light novels. Mm. What a twist. <laughs> because, like, correct me wrong, but, like, he... Uh, Ram goes, like, you fucking cursed her and we've undone it. And he's like, yeah, I did it while uh, she was crying about Subaru and being a little bitch. Yeah, basically got her while she was in a vulnerable state. Which is real fucked up. Eh. That's some Charles Manson shit. It's what, oh. it's what, what about... What about my dude Subaru over here talking to Beatrice like, damn, why are you being a little bitch? Like, just because <laughs> she hasn't written your book, dang, maybe Rosewall stole your book, bitch. Yeah, you maybe she's been writing to you. We didn't talk about that last week. Did he? Do, do you think he did? Why do you think her I, book is empty? I would not put it above Rose, Rosewall to do that. I don't know. I don't, I don't think they've revealed enough of the relationship between that trio to really give enough hints as to what's going on there. But hey, that shit's gone now. The only one that exists yep. is a blank one, so fuck them. But um, Rosewall's character very much, something had to have happened to him during that fight with him and Hector. Like right afterwards? or yeah. You mean when he fucking almost died, where he probably should have died? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because he was like, when he was fighting Ram, I think we're going to talk a lot about that fight between Ram, which I'm surprised because I figured we'd talk a lot about the Garf fight. With uh, Elsa. Well, I mean, Garf's just a badass. Everyone Garf is knows that. so fucking awesome. I think he's yeah, become they, my favorite character. Yeah, he was like, if I was in love with Ram, bitch, oh. <laughs> you would have been number two, I promise. <laughs> I'd take your milfness, but you know, I got that lolly made. Um, but Is she considered a lolly? I mean, she does have a prepubescent looking body. She's small and no titties. Well, I mean, she has some titties, uh youngish looking face but she's not like super short or disproportionately small when i when i think lowly i think like beatrice <laughs> I, I i think lowly is uh lowly lolly whatever fuck what, it, yeah whatever uh, <laughs> i i think it's uh i think the term can kind of be misconstrued and like change from person to person cuz uh, a a conversation that i had with our friend rain uh, they mentioned, like, no, uh, Loli is just a person who looks like a child, but is actually an adult. I'm like... That's called jailbait. Yeah. Or, no, that's that's the reverse jailbait. I, I did not no, want to a... correct them and go, I'm like, no, Loli can be either an adult that looks like a child or an actual child. Yeah, in a problematic sense. But I, I think it's just anything child-looking. I don't know. Yeah. Because I, I always took Ram as kind of looking... Either like teenage-ish or young adult-ish. Like, like she she could be a you know young young adult that's not fully matured yet. Jesse, do you have any opinion on? I'm not gonna talk anything about underage people. Are they? Un- is she underage? I don't think she's underage. No, she's 18. She's 19. Okay. No, Amelia's 19. I think she's 18. Eh, See, super- you're saying I think. Yeah, I think is how you go to prison. Oh, I, so. <laughs> I, I know. I know she's a. Uh, I know that. The uh, demon siblings are above age because we looked it up because we're looking up uh, their age and then Amelia's age came up and she was like 19. Hmm. And Subaru's like 17. Yeah, so they're all kind of that like late high school, early adult. Young adults. Yeah, yeah they're, they're young adults. Young adults. They're YA novels. Yeah. Which is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, I think it's really... That fight between those two, like, had so much just dropped on us. Like, I think last, the episode before that, Reflection on the Water, um, they said, like, oh, Roswell was a part of that group who, uh, like, went and attacked their village and killed everyone but the twins. Oh, yeah. But, like, it showed us that, like, not only was he the one that attacked that group, like, he took her... And then, like, she knew. Rim was not aware of any of that. 
But uh, because we know this original story from Rim, that a group of people attacked them and that Roswell saved them. But Ram knew and was like, yeah, I'm going to fucking eat you one day. <laughs> and now has Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, classic Stockholm right. Syndrome. Gotta love it. Can we can we all agree she has Stockholm Syndrome? Oh, absolutely. 100%. This is, like, literally the definition of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I love you now. <laughs> like You killed everyone I cared about, but you did help me get my horn back, and you had for a Yeah, I did want to murder you. Uh, and then Rosewall can't accept that a bitch loves him, so he's over here trying to murder the bitch. I don't know, it's crazy. Fucking Puck getting... Huge. Rosewell almost shat his pants when he thought that Puck unleashed the beast of the end. He was like, oh. <coughs> and then he's like, just kidding. <laughs> Have we ever? But I can still do that. I keep that thing on me, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just choosing not. To. <laughs> Have we figured out what the beast of the end actually is? Uh, he's one of the it's great him. spirits. It's 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 Puck. So it's like fully... Puck is a saber tooth tiger type shit. Yeah, like so basically, Puck is one of the great spirits, but he basically holds himself back because if he unleashes that beast of the end it it will essentially He's eliminate apocalyptic. Yeah, it, it eliminates end. all life on earth. Okay. All right. Yeah. I I I guess I just can either of you can I go over the great spirits with me cuz I guess have you seen the I movie um missed that the, the... cuz you see Puck in his in the great spirit form and then you see the horse. Yeah, well, have you who, seen that like, movie? Frozen Bond? Yes. Was it? Was that the one? I saw Frozen Bond. I just. I guess I might only just one. not remember it well. Well, there's only yeah. one movie, but there's an OVA, and I couldn't remember if it was the OVA. Uh, which we saw. We've seen the OVA because we watched uh, Jesse and I watched a director's cut together. Yeah. Um. Which is, I think, the way to watch the first season. Yeah, because in Frozen Bond, it goes over how there's like an entire hierarchy with the great spirits and how they have like, almost like a. Not like an FBI system, but like a like a system to keep spirits in order. Because if they if they do something against their law, they'll send the people to come attack them. And that was that weird the, fire magma spirit. And yeah, then the, whatever that third one that showed up was. Yeah, the, the horse. They, the horse was the fire. Because the horse oh. was like his, his. The horse was like balance. Like that was his shit. He's like, all right, Puck, you fucking up shit over here, dog. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that that was also a really good move. That that wasn't yeah. anything to do with this week, but uh, but yeah, yeah. that that kind of goes into the uh, the great spirits and the the balance of power and let's not destroy the earth. And <laughs> well, uh, the week before we saw like snippets of Frozen Bond show up. Yeah, and when Amelia was having her uh, her flashbacks yeah. or whatever. It's canon and it's important. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I I think people should. Have watched it. I mean, it's on Crunchyroll, so it's easy to. Apparently, you need to rewatch it. (laughs) Apparently, I do. Not remembering a fire horse and Puck is a saber tooth tiger ass. (laughs) I know he's a saber tooth tiger ass. I mean, that scene in the first season where fucking Subaru just uh like walks up, sees him, he's like, "You fucked up." Cut off Subaru said, and then for the last five minutes of this show, like the last five minutes, like more than just the ending theme song. It just credits rolling and Subaru's head and body just sitting there. Yeah. And the snow just gets heavier and heavier. And yeah. I would Dude, love to watch a movie that ends like that. Because you remember what his pact with Amelia is. Ami- if Amelia right. dies, he will destroy the world. Okay, yes. Well, and that pact is now broken. Because of something Roswell did. Right. And, and, uh, which I mean, that could be good because now Puck's power isn't necessarily restrained because he couldn't re- unleash his entire power while he had that bond with Amelia something about the, I don't know if it was their the, frozen bond something about their their either their sharing power and she couldn't handle it or maybe it like held him back in some way but he had mentioned either in this episode or the last episode that he his power was dampened while he was bound to Amelia and now he's not and now he's fighting Rosewall so Rosewall kind of played himself in that way <laughs> Yeah, it's like now Puck can choose how much power he exudes instead of like zero or a hundred. <laughs> yeah. On that note, you know what? I don't think Rem has, I mean, not Rem, Ram. I don't think Ram has died from that explosion. But I think Puck's going to see like her ragdoll ass, like ass, uh, <laughs> and then fucking go 
go fucking ballistic. Go away with words broken. <laughs> the English language is an art form, and I fuck it hard. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think the consensus on this week's ReZero is uh, a lot of kind of that blue balling that they were doing the last couple of weeks with all the lead up really, really came to an exciting climax, and we learned a lot, got a lot of really good fight scenes, and it was done really beautifully. Yeah, literally climax together. We all climax together. If we had watched it together, yeah, we fucking would have. Like, jeez. Uh, Amelia walking out and like, oh, I guess the rabbits are here now because there's a snowstorm. Yeah, I don't know if that necessarily means the rabbits per se, but like that's the precursor. Or to pucks it. doing something. Or pucks doing like, something. Well, yeah, wouldn't that be crazy? Well, well, you got you got to think. You know, Roosevelt, there's a big ass fire. You know, put out the fire. How do I do that? Oh, I'm a snow cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and throw some snow on this bitch. Let me salt bait on there. I'm a snow cat. <laughs> Do, I I think this would be getting too much into weeds of things, um, uh, about like symbolism shit with the show. Yeah, let's not. Uh, but I was going to ask, like, <laughs> and I I think I'd be the only one that fucking knows something like this. Uh, if Puck's character is in some way relation to, like, metaphorically and like symbolically, uh. Related to Puck from A Midsummer's Night's Dream, which is the fairy that fucks everything up in that. Oh. It could just be named because it, that's a good fairy name. I don't know. Uh, tell us in the comments if you uh, are a fan of classic literature. Fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen. Episode whatever the fuck... Uh, the Origin of Blind Obedience. That was quite the title. And we got a part two next week. We do. Um, Your guys' quick, like, spoiler-free how you felt about it. Spoiler-free feelings. Yeah, yeah, give me some spoiler-free feelings. We're going to try something a little different on this part right here. Um, They so cute as a trio. They best friends now. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> 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 oh, they are adorable little children. Look at them laughing and playing. You sounded like Adam Sandler. You actually we're looking did. at Swan. You actually okay, did. that didn't that didn't mean to keep doing it. I just yeah, he, that he, wasn't he didn't a compliment. Mean it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone would take being called Adam Sandler a compliment unless you're fucked in the head. Well, I mean, Adam Sandler's funny, but like that's the voice he uses when he's trying to be funny. <laughs> yeah, it is the voice. It's the voice he used all throughout Hubie Halloween. Exactly what happened. Oh, uh, I did think that movie was kind of funny, though. The nigga used a thermos that had <laughs> Inspector Gadget tools on it. I'm, uh, it was like yeah. an earnest movie. <laughs> all right, so, uh, non-spoiler. Yeah, non-spoiler. Yeah, how you feel about it? Um, let's see. Without any spoilers, you know, I, f I felt, you know, I love the, I love, I love opening up, uh, you know, I love the, the more, the better communication. I love the more knowledge they've obtained from previous, um, episodes that, um, you know, won't allow them to be caught off guard. And, you know, I love a little ancestry going on. Let, let me make sure I heard that right. You said ancestry, correct? I said whatever you heard. Okay. Huh. <laughs> 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 what did Brogan hear on this episode of Unnamed Anime Podcast? Started with an I. Which would make that a completely different show. That, then we're talking about uh, Yasuga no Sora. You say that in English. I actually don't know the English title of it because when I watched it, it, it like on Crunchyroll, it's just called Yasuga no Sora. It's uh, a, a anime about these twins who had kind of a rough upbringing, but through it they fell in love with each other and they fuck. Japan and their incest. Yeah. Sweet home a la Japan. <laughs> Um, Sweet home Akihabara. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet home Akihabara. 
I don't know the what tune the of that song. What the fuck was that? that? Yeah, that was not it. No, no, that's like, not the tune. That was... I wasn't going to say anything, but... Uh, I, I was going to say anything. That was not the fucking tune. Uh, but, Jesse, did you have anything else before I interrupted you about the non-spoiler feelings for it? I finished my statement. Okay. I, I, I felt pretty much the same as you guys. I went, fuck, yes, I'm enjoying this trio... As they're just do as they're just doing their normal job outside of having to deal with like the bigger consequences of their world, and then also, oh, communication. We talk in here. <laughs> We're learning. Uh, but now getting into spoiler territory, uh, and talking about the communication, it felt very much like, uh. Itadori and uh, Nabara were in the same shoes as uh, the audience of uh, Fujishima. You don't talk about yourself. Yeah, How are, are we you? supposed to know? Like, I know, Jesse, you said you really liked him as a character. At some point. At one point you did, I feel like. I could be misremembering. I mean, he's cool. I like him. I like his <laughs> technique. He's high. I like his character design. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One thing that, me, he doesn't have any glaring issues. One thing that irritates me about him, him specifically, is they keep making all these little mentions, like things that Goju have said, things that some of the teachers have said, that he has some latent ability to be one of the best sorcerers they've ever seen. And yet every time we've seen him fight, he's just been getting his ass kicked. <laughs> I think he is supposed to be kind of the uh, Sasuke of the show. Like, Sasuke not in the sense of... He's going to turn evil and uh, start fucking shit up. And then at the very end, like, no, we were friends all the time. Please marry me, Naruto. But we can't. So I'm going to marry the uh, redheaded girl. Uh, and Naruto, okay. you take that one that's always liked you. And then we'll bond together later. Um, well. But more of the sense of he's supposed to be that really cool guy with, like, a insane backstory. Or we want to only give you beats, pieces. Little, little pieces and pieces. Little pieces and pieces of it. I think you just had a stroke live. I 100% have a stroke every day in my life. Um, well, that... I kind of disagree, but like I, I see where you're coming from. But let me, let me, let me throw this at you guys and see if this isn't. I wouldn't say change your opinion, but you know, basically so far in the show, they have been thrown on missions with the sole intentions of getting Yuji killed, and if this guy dies too, well. That's just the job. This is... It's like, oh, we know that this nigga has a Sakuna finger in this uh, detention center. Why don't you three first-year students who one nigga just learned about cursed spirits now? <laughs> <laughs> why, don't you go, why don't you go take care of it? And then, like, you know, in this competition, the most recent time when he was fighting that one dude who, you know, they were fighting relatively equally, but the guy was clearly holding back, the blood guy. He was going to mm, be, yeah. like, ahead of another major family. It's like, well... This, you know, he's a first year and he's going against this third year is like clearly with the shit. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know, he's been put in like this, this, uh, not advantageous positions, like literally all series. So I feel like his skill level doesn't match like his battle results because it's just like, I don't know, he's a level, you know, 10 Pokemon going to battle a gym leader by himself. You know, it's like <laughs> not gonna, it's not gonna end well, dog. It's not a Bulbasaur versus but, uh, Brock. But the way they say they talk about him, they they don't talk about him as if he's a level ten. Well, they talk about him as if he's like a level hundred. I I feel like it's something that they're maybe leaving out or is being lost because, like in this last episode near the end, they go, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I can't talk to my sister. Uh, she's in a coma, so she's not going to be able to tell me shit, but I need to find out. Like, wait, hold on. Your sister's in a coma? But you're... And, like, he didn't even say she was in a coma. He just said she's still bedridden. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't know that she's necessarily in a coma, but it says she's bedridden and she wouldn't be able to tell him for him to know when she was going to be Which basically cursed. means coma. Yeah, you like, would think. So, like, you... And fucking Itadori and uh, Nabara took it in strides, not saying shit about him. Like, hold on. What do you mean, like, you can't talk to your sister? Like, w tell us more about your family background. 
Yeah, there has well, to be something with him because they all like kind of almost like not necessarily deify him, but hold him in a lot higher regard than I would after seeing him in the last, you know, three or four battles. Like, Homeboy literally just gets smacked a few times, and then everyone else comes and saves the day. Like, oh, I'm here. Oh, there's a fucking plant in my heart. Okay, I'm leaving now. <laughs> Granted, he couldn't use his sorcery because of the plant. But, yes. Like, like he, it seems like they keep alluding to him as this big fucking deal when he really doesn't seem like it. So I'm I'm curious to know what's going on with him and if they need to, you know, unlock his Reaper seal or whatever for, for his for his power to come I out. I haven't watched all of Bleach. I don't know. I, I got to the Reaper, hell Reaper seal, uh, Naruto. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and, what the fuck is a Reaper seal in Naruto? And you, and you can't release. You know, that that's a, you're going to die if that happens. <laughs> and then it's... That, that's, that is a death sentence. What yeah. happened to Naruto? A Reaper Death Seal is basically... Um, it's a forbidden jutsu that the fourth and the third Hokage use. Um, and basically, it can do something like seal the nine tails inside of your child. Or, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, you can murder somebody with it. It's basically a life for a life kind of jutsu. It, yeah, it's very OP. But, like, for example, like, the whole thing with why he took Sasuke is because the third Okage used the Reaper Death Seal to destroy both of Orochimaru's arms, so he couldn't use Jutsu from there on. So that's why he was trying to get a body. That's why he had Kimimaru, the bone guy, and got Sasuke to find a body to steal. Orochimaru because the third Okage basically made his body useless. Oh, he had since he destroyed his arm. Oh, did that get yeah. destroyed during the, uh, the tuning exam? The end of the tuning exam? Yeah. Is that what no, he, he still had his arms physically, but basically he corroded them down to, like, his arms were unusable. Have you really not like, seen Naruto? Had... I watched That it. was, like, literally episode, like, like 70. I, I watched it on Toonami when I was a kid. Uh, every so often, I go back and try to watch it on Netflix or Crunchyroll or something. I mean, it's not worth a rewatch. Uh, <laughs> well, I just want to try to actually watch the whole thing and finish it, but then something else catches my attention and I leave it. All I care about is the banger of a theme song that is the tuning exam arc. The, Naruto did have some cool theme songs, but um, Kung Fu Generation is a great band. <laughs> Fighting dreamers, baby. Uh, oh. But back to Jujutsu Kaisen. Um. I felt like this last episode was pretty hype, but kind of like Jujutsu, ju, the last episode, Jujutsu Koisen. That's what it's called. What? Um, Jujutsu Koisen. Am I missing something? Did you call me? Uh, is The last episode was called Jujutsu Koisen. K-O-I. What are you S-H- saying of the, of the series or of the podcast? Of the series. Of Jujutsu Kaisen. That's what the last episode was named. I missed that. Yeah, Poison. Which, uh, if you look at ever the uh, 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 descriptions of episodes for our podcast, uh, I had mentioned that the name of that episode is how a uh, person from Chicago would say Kaisen. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you want to go watch some Jujutsu Koisen? Drink some uh, uh, beef eater? type of gin i was trying to think of the uh that really shitty liqueur from chicago hey jesse can you shoot me in the face please i'm leaving the chat <laughs> <laughs> um, one of these days he actually will do that uh, if i have to die at least i'll be dying at the hands of somebody i love Ooh. Huh? <laughs> um but yeah, uh, so that's kind of our two weekly rotation animes. Brogan, you said you wanted to do some shit talking this week. Oh, that was that was the shit talking. That, oh, that that was the talking. Like, that seems like a pretty normal. Thing no, for... I just I just really wanted us to start. <laughs> like I really wanted us to start talking about those first because I really had to talk about them. I thought I thought you had some like, special thing planned, and I was like, oh, we're gonna oh, talk shit. We haven't pl- like we could plan it on this episode right now. We could make plans for watching Attack on Titan, and then start a segment called. Uh, this is why Attack on, on Titan is terrible. I was gonna say shit on Titan. Shit on Titan. I like shit on Titan. Uh, where we actually start watching it, 
and like we watch like a couple episodes every week and then have a s- small segment of us shitting on and going, okay, here's why it's bad. Or here's why it's bad, but for some reason I'm enjoying it. That won't happen. I need more than a week's notice to prepare for that shittiness. <laughs> yeah. Start drinking now and we'll start watching it next week, Jesse. Can I have <laughs> uh, alcohol delivered to you, Jesse? Probably. I mean... Here, here in the great state of Texas, baby, we have Drizzly, which is essentially Uber Eats for alcohol. It comes in an hour or less. I'm so jealous of that. I actually might do that for him. Otherwise, I'll just uh, square cash him some of my stimmy money. And uh... Uh, You can do that. You can always do that. <laughs> um, Say, hey, this is for alcohol. Like, Please not going to lie, I am over two months sober now. Not by choice. <laughs> <laughs> just... I haven't. I actually might send him some alcohol tonight. Fuck it, do it. Uh, but uh, since but yeah. that's kind of everything we had on the docket, do we want to jump to Jesse's corner, or do, do either one of I you mean, have any uh, just random animes that you watched this week that you really wanted to talk about? Um, Jesse, if you had anything, uh, I'd like you to go first. Yeah. Um. So I did. I watched. A sh- I watched one new show and saw a trailer for something that looks pretty funny and I'm really interested in watching. Um, so the show that I watched was, it's a new Netflix show that came out um, and it's called High Rise Invasion. Um, I um, actually mentioned that, I think I, last week I made a quick like synopsis without like getting everything in. It. I had also watched that, but not all of it. But Jesse, please Carry on your feelings on it. <laughs> oh, broken. <laughs> you got it all out? <laughs> <laughs> I knew exactly what was happening there. So, High Rise Invasion. It is kind of like Darwin's game, in a sense. Except for you're fighting on top of buildings slash inside of buildings. Um, The entire premise of the show is... Oh, shit! We're on top of buildings! Oh, no! These people on masks are trying to kill us! Um, But then there's this whole, like... The whole part of this game is basically they're trying to create a new, like, find a new god and have a perfect god. Um, so, I mean, it was interesting. I mean, I watched it all. Um, it's very graphic, um, like, as in, like, a lot of nudity and uh, blood and gore. Um, yeah. You know, the only, the only thing that thumbs down is the lack of nipples, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> but Panty is on every other scene. Like it's it's a lot. <laughs> I, I will say this: I appreciate that. Like, unlike a lot of stuff on Crunchyroll or recently, it doesn't just cut away from the gore, or it doesn't like black it out with that weird blackening thing. Like you see, like blood splatter and shit, like a nineteen nineties uh, Saturday morning Japanese cartoon. Rogan, your choice of words here in the last few weeks really have me concerned. <laughs> what did I say this time? Nothing. Go ahead, tell him. Well, first it was the Jesse boy thing, and then you're saying at least we're not getting you know that blackening. But you know what I mean—the censoring of the screen where they're like it sure. shadows it out. Mm-hmm. Yep, a little too black for me too. I'm <laughs> I wasn't any more sure to use. Oh, uh, no. You guys break me once a week. And then the yeah, next bro- week I don't know what to do. Yeah, Brogan's like, I painted my nails black. That's enough inclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I have one black friend. What more do you want from me? I have five. <laughs> Name them all. And it's worse that you know how many you have. I want you to know that. Actually, I don't know how many I have. Um, so I've, I've mentioned this before, but I just kind of want to quickly state again. If you have not watched Wonder Egg Priority, and this is to both of you or the audience, just to any, just to humanity in general. If you've not watched Wonder Egg Priority, 
watch it. It is an anime that won't win anime of the year because it takes itself seriously and it's gorgeous and not shown any, but it should. It should win anime of the year. Um, it just gets better and better with each episode. Just the character growth, the writing, the anime. Literally some of the best animation I've ever seen in, outside of like anime movies. It, it, even, it even rivals some anime movies. Like, it is gorgeous. Freaking gorgeous. And on top of that, just great writing, great character, lovable characters. You're starting to get a little more suspense as we get towards the end of the season. Like, wonderful anime that won't win. Something like Shit on Titan is probably going to win anime of the year. But this should. This deserves it in every aspect. So, just wanted to restate that. I, uh, I don't have Funimation to watch it with. Uh... I mean, you can use my Funimation. I, I know I can use your Funimation. I just, I just, I just want to point that out. I'd, I'd have to ask you for it. You know how I feel about asking for things. Well, I won't give it to you unless you ask me. Motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> um, I also watched something new this week. Uh, I don't want to get into talking about it too much because we're 50 minutes in. Uh, but I watched yeah, a horror 15. anime. Hmm? You said 15 or 50. Oh man! I've, so horror I'm anime. Three, I watched a horror anime. You know what? I I mentioned it to you on Thursday. Um, if you remember, I remember the um, conversation. I just can't remember the name of it. I started watching. I started and finished. Finished it on Thursday. I started watching another. Oh, that's right. That's that's yeah. Which is on Crunchyroll. I don't want to get too deep into talking about it. Um. I had fun time watching it. Uh, I don't watch a lot of horror anime, and I think I should. Uh, so if you guys have any more recommendations, please send them to me. Jesse, have uh, you seen another? Um, I have not seen it yet. No. I'm, I'm going to but give I'm kind of a of spoiler-free synopsis real quick. Uh, but audience, if you have any horror recommendations, send them to me at bro underscore Gilmore on Twitter or to the unnamed anime on Twitter. Uh, I will look at either because I want horror anime. But the spoiler-free synopsis, um, really good mystery, curse-themed, like, ghost thriller at the beginning half. Uh, and then the latter half, it really just kind of turns into uh, Final Destination. <laughs> it turns into Final Destination. And that's one of my favorite movie series. Because the first Final Destination's really good, and then it just starts getting trashier and trashier. But I think when you say that, that makes it sound like another got sort of that like trashy, cheap trick death. It did. I, mean, I thought it did. I thought it was. I thought it was good all the way through. On, on, on thinking back to it, halfway through it got real cheap, but then the very end with the twist gets you like, "Fuck!" It would right in fucking front of me. How did I not realize it? And then like. Which redeems it a little, but it, it has its problems. And I, I'm a big believer, I think I think I was gonna mention it earlier, but like if you can't like critique or criticize something that you enjoy and like, you got you gotta figure out your priorities. Oh, yeah. I mean that that's when you start getting into stan culture, and stan culture is one of the most obnoxious, toxic things to ever well, happen to the internet. That's how you join cults. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but uh, but yeah. So we're we're coming up near an hour. Uh, I think this would be a good time for uh, Jesse's nope. corner. Rawr. There's one other thing I wanted to talk about, but I was letting you guys go on Rawr. your tangent. <laughs> um, there is a show that I saw a trailer for that looks pretty funny. Um, but it's called "I've Been Killing Slimes for 300 Years and Maxed Out My Level." Oh, I've I I saw an announcement for that. Uh, on like some anime uh, email chain, it, does it look any good? Like, does the trailer look like it's shitty, oh. or does it look like it's gonna be halfway decent? Oh, it looks fucking hilarious. So basically, the trailer is you know it starts off with like a work like a desk worker, and they die and get basically reincarnated into another world, you know, kind of thing. But she just wants to live an easy life. So she just lives out in the woods and just, you know, farm slimes, which she, you know, does for consequently, you know, 300 years. It becomes the strongest character in this realm by doing that. 
so basically people just keep coming up to challenge her and she's like nigga i'm just trying to stay at home like leave me alone <laughs> but it's like dragons show up at her door and shit like that and she's like stop man <laughs> it's a show with all of my favorite traits uh isekai and overpowered characters yeah uh, like they didn't get to like what her powers were specifically but like yeah it's just so funny she was just like she farms slimes and then she's just literally just sitting out like on a cottage out in a field and just super random like like OP characters come up trying to fight her, and she's like, "No, <laughs> stop." <laughs> I like the sound of that a lot. You could really only pull off the overpowered character trope if you're gonna make it a comedy, because otherwise yeah. it's just sort of like, Ugh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it was definitely one of the things where she was like, it was less of like her trying to become the strongest character, but I got the sense she was just like, just killing slimes around her farm to be safe, <laughs> kind of thing. Like not like hunting. <laughs> Makes sense. So she, like, accidentally became the strongest character. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh. But, yeah. And then, now, we can unrewind time and <laughs> <laughs> start <laughs> Jesse's Corner. Rawr. So this one is not going to be, you know, a question proposed. This is going to be a homework assignment for us three. Oh. So, we can either be nice or fuck each other. ¿Por qué no las dos? I mean, we always <laughs> fuck each other. <laughs> like, I mean, well, I'm going to be fucking somebody. <laughs> I'm going to get um, fucked is what I'm hearing. So we can just do this and, like, mm-hmm. you know... I pick for Mitch, Mitch, Mitch picks for Brogan, Brogan picks for me. Sure. But my homework assignment I have proposed is we all, we each give, you know, we, we give someone one anime to watch before next week. Oh. So, so preferably less than, like, 12 episodes or less, preferably. Brogan, if you want to give me something longer, you know, I don't have a life, so I can watch 100 episodes in three days. <laughs> Now, do we have to announce what anime it's going to be right here, or can we sleep on it, announce what it was at the beginning of the next episode, and then give our recaps from there? Because I'd like, I'd like to sit down and think about it. What do you think, Jesse? Yeah. Hmm. Do I, do I like the assistance on Jesse's corner? <laughs> oh, shit. Hmm. <laughs> You know, I put you on the spot, and this is this is a pretty difficult question because you know you could have a good anime in mind, but it might be like a little too long or right. Yeah, I mean, I know what I was going to give. Granted, I had you know a little bit more time to think about it, but I mean, I could grab my phone real quick and just start scrolling through my watch queue. If 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 you want something right now on the spot, I mean, I I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna say gonna we just... each have. I'll take I'll take five minutes for both of you to pick something, right now. Since you know we are still slightly under an hour, and we typically been going to like fifteen minutes after, so we have a little bit of time. Bet. Let me grab my phone. Okay. He's going to grab his phone. It's um, right here. Oh, he's grabbing his phone. Um, I have an idea. Um, but we are going to use that five minutes. I'm going to set a timer for us. That is perfect. Um. And then I'm going to uh, leave here for a second to uh, go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. Like this, all, this whole entire thing right here that's happening is going to be like fast forwarded in the uh, the vod, the vod, and the uh, audio only, which you can watch on, which you can listen to on Spotify, Overcast. Apple iTunes uh, podcast, any of that, you can listen to the podcast audio only. We're our own fucking sponsors. Um, this is 100% a game of how are we going to fuck each other over and make us watch either something incredibly sad or something incredibly fucking. Oh, absolutely. Okay, good. Um, Jesse, since this is Jesse's corner, would you like to go first and fuck me? Yes. 
I would love to do that. <laughs> um, this show is on Crunchyroll, so you would be able to watch this immediately. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to read you the synopsis. Oh, buddy. One day, a group of aliens planning to take over Earth invade Tokyo. Momoko, who aspires to be an idol, gets involved in the fight in an unexpected form. Waru Demon, king of the alien empire, uses various tactics to hunt down Momoko and the people around her. Momoko then decides to stand up to the war demon. Plain and simple. I hate it already, and I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> it is called Wonder Momo. Oh, God. It is touted to be one of the worst animes ever. It only has five episodes. <laughs> five episodes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm in for a ride. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Rick. Oh, jeez, Rick. Okay, well, thank you, Jesse. I enjoyed my fucking. Um, Brogan. <laughs> um, let me present my ass to you. No, you're picking for Jess. It's it's a yeah, trying. It's, a, me. it's oh. a trying. Oh, I'm picking for Jesse. It's now. a trying. Yeah, I fuck see. Mitch. Mitch fucks you. Oh, you okay, fuck okay. I was gone for a bathroom, so I didn't. Oh, uh, that's okay. Do you want to go though? I, I can go. I I I have that's one. Fine. I have line, one lined up because I figured we were just going to give each other either horrific gore porn or. I mean, uh, you can do whatever you want. But I'm giving Jesse. I'm giving you. Uh, I think it's pronounced Jibite. Is that not like Jibate? Like you got Jibated? It could be Jibate. <laughs> um, could be Gibbyite. Uh, like Gibby from uh, iCarly. I don't know. Um, <laughs> let me give you... Uh, it's on Crunchyroll, so you can find it easily. Um, oh, there's that timer I set. Uh, I'll give you the uh, synopsis. In 2030. People in Japan are turning into different forms of monsters based on their age, sex, and race. The eldest is named Jibia. After being rich in variety, like Jibier. I, okay, whatever the fuck, fuck that. Um, a pair of samurai and ninja appear in the blighted wasteland of Japan. They both traveled from the early Edo period, fighting together with help from a doctor who tries to find a cure for Jibia, facing careless attacks from Jibia and outlaws that attack travelers for food. They start the dangerous journey with enemies all around. Um, it is considered on my anime list the literally the worst anime from Crunchyroll. Okay. Um, it's, I watched the first episode, and let me tell you, it was like a really bad 90s anime. Like, the animation looked like it was from the 90s. Like, hard edges, like, sharp chins and hair. <laughs> like, I was like, okay. Um, it's 12 episodes long, and uh, you're just going to hate it. So, Jesse fucked me with a very low-ranked anime. You fucked Jesse with a very low ranked anime. What I'm doing is this one isn't necessarily ranked as low but it'll leave some scars. Um, we actually talked about this earlier in the episode of the podcast. Let me, let me read the synopsis to you before giving you the name. After losing their parents in a car accident, fraternal twins Haruka and Sora move to a rural town where Sora develops deep feelings for her brother and pursues a forbidden love that threatens to disrupt their new friendships. You, my friend, are watching Yosuga no Sora. I fucking hate you. <laughs> Why would you... <laughs> it's as close to hentai as you get while still remaining an anime. See? And I... God, it's bad. I didn't suggest to Jesse, hey, watch Bible Black. Bible Black. Sorry, you already submitted your answer. I already submitted my answer. But Bible Black is literally just Fuda hentai. Oh, yeeks. Uh, I think there's 12 episodes. I don't fucking know. 12 episodes for 12-year-olds. <laughs> Plus, I don't think 12-year-olds should be watching porn. Well, you just said it was Fuda hentai, right? Which is young boys. No, no, that's Shada. Oh, what? Fuda is dick girls. Oh, I got my my TAs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got my no, TAs no, you, mixed you, you up. Good. You good. You good. Uh... Dick but girls. yeah, I, I I will take your uh, 
incest porn, and I'll run with it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, text me the name so I remember to look it up. Is it on Crunchyroll? It is. <laughs> oh, fucking shit. Uh, so yeah. we're going to have an interesting Jesse's Corner giving a breakdown of these um, animes we're going to be watching the next week. We'll probably each do like um, a brief how we felt about it, probably you know, two, three minutes each. And... How many times we masturbated. Can you say masturbate on Twitch? I think you can. Hey, Twitch, let us know if you can't say <laughs> masturbate on Twitch. We know you're watching. Oh, shit. <sighs> I, th- I don't. I'm not. I don't want to watch my show. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to. I just don't want to. Jesse, thank you for making this Jesse's corner. <laughs> no. I am filled with glee. <laughs> I appreciate. I want to do a Jesse corner like this again sometime. But... Say less. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's just what Jesse becomes. Us giving each other a trash anime to watch. Maybe so. You never know. We're but... unpredictable. Oh, whoo! Who knows what we're going to do? We're going maybe in the podcast early. Just we we only are on the podcast for like we do the intro and then just like turn off. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the viewers on their toes. Yeah, and then we go stream on YouTube or something. <laughs> uh, Mixer. No, uh, they died. Facebook. Yeah. Um, Facebook streaming. But Ugh. before this devolves into just a rambling cast i think that'll probably do it for this week yeah i, th- I think i think we're good jesse's corner and all um hey thanks for watching uh please uh like and subscribe on youtube follow us on twitter at the unnamed anime uh let us know what you think on uh apple itunes podcast go comment on there or comment on other podcasts about us i don't i don't know what you <laughs> want to do with your life fucking troll uh you shouldn't but you do you. I'm not going to tell you what the fuck is up. Um, and tell a friend about us. Or tell an enemy. What is tell a mom. Tell a cousin. Tell a sister. Because I'm going to have to do that type of incest porn. Great. But yeah. As always. Peace. Love. And anime. Nick. <laughs> I think I cut him off at the right time. You're always cutting Jesse off, so that's great. Oh, don't say that. You can't cut me off.